So for those of you who don't know Trial Reach or what Trial Reach is about, uh, first of all, shame on you. And the second thing is, um, well, Trial Reach is about clinical trials, so about pharmaceutical companies, about new treatments, about drug development. It's uh, also about patients, and first and foremost about patients, and people like you and me who uh, may have a medical condition, and what our doctors are prescribing us is just not good enough, uh, or the side effects are, 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 are too bad. It's also a lot about technology, about data, uh, and about uh, collaboration and integration of uh, individuals, organizations, platforms, technologies, uh, and especially, it's about helping uh, clinical trials save time, save money, save leakage, being more efficient in the end. So how do we do that? Um, well, Trial Reach is a platform that helps to um, uh, cut, cut times and cost involved in clinical trials. And we do that in two approaches. Number one, by changing the way patients find, learn, and, and gain access to clinical trials. And this, this is an example of uh, what we're trying to solve. This is a typical study uh, title of a, of a clinical trial. This is what it looks like for all of us who are not uh, doctors. So what we do at Trial Reach is in uh, 24, 48 hours, we transform that 120 page scientific data uh, protocol into this. It's a uh, very detailed summary, uh, about 800 to 1,000 words, covering all the key aspects of the clinical trial in layman's terms. It's accurate, it's up to date, and it's not just in layman's terms, it's also approved before publishing by the actual sponsor of the trial and by an independent ethics committee or an IRB. So. Uh, patients don't even need to register or pay anything to access this data. It's completely available, and that's what we're trying to do, to make clinical data, clinical trial data information more accessible and more transparent. The second thing that we do is we try to help uh, sponsors, give them the tools to uh, find, to reach, and, and to enroll uh, subjects, patients, um, uh, faster and more efficiently than ever before. And we do that uh, with technology. This is, these are some screenshots of our sponsor's dashboard um, and where sponsors can track uh, how, uh, you know, the, in real time, the applications in a blinded way, so it's fully compliant, how, what the applications that are coming in, um, the, where they're coming from at, you know, a very detailed level, breakdown by demographics, by ge geography, by, by, you know, gender, age, and everything. They can also track the uh, progress at each recruiting site, uh, how many patients have been referred, how many confirmed, how many screened, how many enrolled, they can track everything in real time. And one other very important thing, they can see um, in aggregated basis the reasons why um, uh, patients fail to be eligible for a particular trial. So if anyone is running clinical trials understands how important this information is for sponsors so that they can see it in real time. We also have a very um, uh, selective process, so we don't just flood you with old, outdated data uh, or databases from you know, uh, patients who signed up for you know, some interest in diabetes uh, maybe three years ago. Uh, people come to our website, they have to be pre-screened according to a, a, a pre-screener that we agreed with you and that it's also been approved by ethics. Uh, people have to register, people have to opt in and enter their preference uh, uh, contact information. And finally, you have the last call to say if you want this patient to be referred or not. All this, again, to make the process efficient and to save everybody's time, the patients, the investigators, and the sponsors. 
Um, so we are working currently with uh, many of, uh, of the uh, top pharmaceutical companies and CROs. Some are present here. Um, we are helping them save time uh, and money as, as we're trying to do. That's our, our core. And we already, although we're based in London, we're a global organization. We are uh, conducting or collaborating in clinical trials uh, in uh, all over Europe, uh, US, Canada, Latin America, Australia, um, and each one in their own native language. So why do we do all this? So first of all, because we think that by making the information better, more accessible, we'll make the pie bigger. The more accessible and transparent, the better the quality of the information about clinical trial, we believe, and this is really the, the underlying um, message and the underlying idea about uh, trial reach, is that more people would be uh, willing to participate in a clinical trial than now. And in the end, we get uh, faster, better, uh, more effective, and cheaper uh, medications. So I invite you to look at our website. I didn't want to bore you with uh, screenshots. Um, it's trialreach.com. And uh, thank you very much for your time. Inspire is an online patient support community it's for patients and caregivers organized by therapeutic area. Uh, sort of at a glance, Inspire is, is seven years old this month, actually. And at a glance, um, it's grown to be something that, um, that is quite active and engaged. Um, there are 200 disease-specific communities within Inspire. 80 of those are in partnership with national patient advocacy organizations. And this adds a lot of uh, credibility, authority, and trust. Um, while most of our members are in the US, we have members all over the world. Um, and uh, traffic has increased uh, a great deal, mostly through discovery. So patients uh, discover content that patients who come before them have, have created. And that's a sort of virtuous cycle, the feedback loop as new members create content. I get excited about the number of posts and words because in many respects it's kind of the weight of the community in my mind. The, the thing that makes Inspire unique, I believe, in, in America is that um, these partnerships with the patient advocacy groups um, are a way for patients to recognize that there's some vetting, some credibility, some, some trust when they discover this. Uh, a great deal of our patients discover Inspire when they're newly diagnosed or when they're at a crisis or they're searching for help and support about their disease. So that's particularly important at this time. And while we have strong ethical uh, underpinnings, it helps them a lot to see the names of these organizations as part of the community. When it comes to the financial side of it and the business side, which we'll talk about, it's important that Inspire owns the communities and owns access to the members. And from a regulatory perspective, that's important because pharmaceutical companies don't want to own uh, patient communities. I'm sure we can talk a lot about that. Two more slides. From the, from the patient's perspective, this is what Inspire looks like. So Goldie111 is an actual Inspire member. And when she joins Inspire, uh, there are lots of things she can do. She can read content that others have written. She can uh, engage in discussions and uh, journal postings, which are really blogs. Um, she forms friends with others, just like uh, other online communities. Um, she can control her privacy, which is crucial, as we all know. She can control what's shared and with whom. She gets daily and weekly updates. She can participate um, in all kinds of research. So clinical trial recruitment, health-focused market research, and she can share information about herself. Um, so there's a combination of structured and unstructured data for her. From industry's perspective, and I think that's what this panel is about, is um, how does industry look upon this? The way that we would describe what Inspire does to industry, which is essentially pharmaceutical, biotech, and device companies, is to say that we provide targeted access to patient populations. That access is permission-based. So our very strong ethical model is that um, everything a patient engages in needs to be transparent and needs to be um, something they want to do, something they choose to do. That sounds obvious to all of us in this audience, but there are things uh, that have been done before, and I think we all know about them, that, um, that don't really follow those guidelines. And so it's important that when a patient is invited to a clinical trial or to anything else, that the invitation come from Inspire, that we never sell a member list or anything like that, um, and that the patient is able to either ignore it, choose to participate in it, and when they choose to participate, they're able to see a very clear description of what it is. Um, in the case of trials, clear links to clinicaltrials.gov describing the trial, and in case of other things, identifying to the extent possible sort of what's going on and, um, and what's behind it. So we're able to say to pharma companies, we have populations that look like this. If you'd like to approach a population uh, with particular kinds of learnings in mind or particular kinds of um, brand awareness or clinical trial recruitment, we can help shape that and provide appropriate invitations to patients to do that. 
What you're looking at here is one of our communities, which is in partnership with the National Psoriasis Foundation, a huge therapeutic area in the United States. And you know, we're currently in doing all, all three of these. We're doing um, clinical trial recruitment for a major pharmaceutical company, market research to learn more about quality of life of patients with psoriasis and, uh, and brand awareness uh, around some, some therapeutics. So that's a, a good example of it. Um, and so that's it. I think I'll, I'll finish uh, half a minute early. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>
Yeah. Well, what we did what, uh, at, at the beginning, to, uh, we start to listen. We start to uh, uh, get intelligence of what was the post uh, uh, of the blogosphere. Uh, we wanted to uh, get a humankind brand, uh, which is coined as a term coined by Leo Burnett, which means having a purpose, but having acts as well via interaction. We wanted to engage. And uh, I want to end with the outcomes one year after. We, as a brand, is are the, to the top influencer in the conversation about pregnancy, which was selected as the, as the key word. We have balanced the responsibility in the conversation between male and, f and female, and we have a good uh, rate of influencer. But uh, to end, uh, I wanted to say that there is real social engagement. People. Uh, talks to us as if we were one more peep at the blogosphere. They said to us that they have finally get pregnant. They said to us that they are about to be uh, on the delivery process. They said to us the fair pictures of the baby. We receive uh, from time to time a lot of follow Fridays. So stop advertising, start socializing, start, uh, start socializing if you want to get uh, really a strong and engaging brands in this new landscape. Thank you. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I did the bet with a friend. So can we together say so, lo, glo, mo, Gabi? I cannot hear you. Solo. Thank you. <laughs> so how can um, pharmaceutical co pharmaceutical company today interact within social media. That uh, experience I would like to share with you today uh, through this uh, example of what the patient or voice of patient. I would like to share with you our first dive in this social media ocean. But first, I would like to come back to some uh, fact and which uh, help me to decide about this story. So in France today, we have 15 million people with chronic disease. Roche has the foundation, Roche France Foundation, which aims to raise awareness on chronic disease. One day, this president of the foundation asked me, can you help me to create, to facilitate patient expression regarding this chronic disease relative an expert who are dealing in the everyday life regarding this condition? And for me, it was crystal clear and logic that voix des patients will be the solution. So, how it looks like? Voix des patients is a media it's a combination of internet and social media. As you can see on this screenshot, is um, um, how can I say, it's um, a, a website and a media where we can find more regarding the condition of patient. It's more about the condition than treatment monitoring, as we can see this morning. Uh, this uh, more uh, um, information and news regarding this uh, condition of chronic disease. So it's based on uh, user-generated content and uh, specialist on journalist selection of content. So thanks to this combination, we are able today to build a chronic disease community to facilitate the expression of patients, to inform, to mobilize, and debate. How it works? So today we have um, on the left side uh, editorial animation with some topics as um, uh, how can I uh, deal with my insurance if I'm HIV people? Should I say to my colleagues that I'm a schizophrenia uh, patient? Uh, we have some uh, selection of article. We had some illustration to, to give more emo emotion uh, message. And of course we can have also some video. And uh, you have a selection of articles, and you can s uh, read some uh, global article if you click, because we are in the global world. And other articles are directly related to this topic. 
and for sure you have this um, use of social media integrated directly in this platform because you can uh, connect through your Facebook account and you have some sharing and contributing function who are um, aiming uh, to, to raise our goal to facilitate the expression of patient. So what I would like to do now is sharing with you some uh, easy uh, and takeaways. Uh, in fact, uh, as we face this um, huge ocean, because we are a pharmaceutical company, we have some rules, so we need to play with this rule and to understand how it works and to define a project with a specific guideline. So that's what we defined at the beginning, what we would like to do and what is our goals. Then, as um, we would like to, to, to be uh, very uh, pragmatic, we decided to write some clear rules. So we wrote uh, a, a charter, a, moder a moderation, and uh, we work very uh, carefully on this editorial tone. Because, as you know, as we discussed this morning, uh, the most important thing is to propose uh, quality of content. Quality of content, for me, is the most issue because it's very hard to, to be uh, at the high level to meet the needs of the patient, of the expert, who are involved in this debate. And like that, you can uh, mobilize and uh, animate some debate if you selection the right content, if you are talking to this person who are uh, suffering from chronic disease. And for sure, uh, the most important things is after that to evaluate your project and uh, measure for sure your know-how will grow up faster and day after day. So today, what the patient was of patients is 9,400 fans and also 1,000 uh, followers on Twitter. So, to conclude, when you face something huge regarding this social media ocean, you need to think step by step. You need to move forward and divide it in small pieces and to understand how you can work in this new world. Finally, I would like to thank you for your attention and I hope that you will like Voix des Patients and I will thank my, my, my team, Hervé, who is uh, daily uh, taking care about this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. We work in a really boring industry, right? I mean, sometimes it drives me crazy. It's true. It's like when we get hired, it's like we go into these corporations and suddenly they take our hearts out and fill it with robotic hearts and say, you know, no more emotion. You're not allowed to feel emotion anymore. And I say, you know, but what about, you know, engagement? What about love? You know, and they say, what's the return on investment of love? You know, even something, a product whose biggest aspiration is for me to throw it down the toilet has more followers and more engagement than we do in pharma. And I looked and I thought, well, what's the, what's the, the, big, the industry that I, I can find, which is kind of like the dullest kind of industry I could find, and I thought, well, it's freight shipping, okay? There's nothing much more engaging than that. I mean, you know, even that has more followers than us, 290,000 Facebook fans. I mean, where are we going wrong? So my mission is to try and create a more engaging and more emotional um, image for our company and hopefully for the pharma industry as well. So that's the mission. And one of the ways um, I'm trying to do this is by opening things up a little bit, is trying to make it a bit more fun. Now, we make these really heavy, serious drugs, and they're very important, and, and it's a very exciting, innovative industry. And uh, as, as we've said already today, we've mentioned him a few times, Dave DeBronca, if you read his book, um, one of the first things he says is what he was prescribed by his doctor was go away and laugh. Laughter is the best medicine. Fun is really good for you. So... With, the, with this in mind, um, I created, um, or we're about to launch, a game called Serum. Now, Serum is, um, that's my mission, Serum is um, Pharma's first full social game. And it's where you can get to play at being a pharma company. You get to own a laboratory, uh, which you can customize. You can invite your friends to um, come along and uh, collaborate with you. You get to discover molecules in a fun kind of way. You get to turn those molecules into, into products, into drugs. And then you get to launch them into a clinical trial and fight the disease. The aim of the game is to cure the world, one disease at a time, and increase your health points. 
In doing so, we also hope to provide a little bit of education around the farm industry and also about the diseases upon which we, uh, or what, what the challenges that you have to meet. Um, and I'm going to try something a bit innovative now. I'm going to um, link up by satellite broadcast, and I hope this works with the technology with one of the, the founders of So, Professor Sir, are you there? Hello, Doctors 2.0 people. My, you look like a very interesting bunch. Heaven help us. Hang on, there's someone asleep at the back there. If you'd like to find out more about my amazing adventures with test tubes, just visit www.serum-game.com. Genius! Hmm. Now, where did I put that Petri dish? Hmm. Thank you very much. So, ladies and gentlemen, Denise, thank you for this great opportunity to talk together uh, today. Some a few words around healthcare and Orange. So, we we are a recent division, vertical division of uh, Orange, dedicated to healthcare and, on, of course, to uh, pharmaceutical labs. Uh, your industry faces new challenges. We are facing new challenges. We think that this uh, really disruptive times require to change state of mind and business models. And we think that when we talk about uh, ICT and new technologies, we are not just talking about social marketing media or website. We are talking about how to use ICT within the whole business processes you have to um, improve your business revenues, to improve your delivery of services, to improve your cooperation with your partners. We have tried to understand how the value chain of pharmaceuticals labs uh, runs, and we think that ready uh, right now, we have great opportunity to, uh, to do business together, especially around um, uh, new solutions, starting from innovation to uh, delivery and distribution. So um, the interest is that um, creating new services embedded uh, directly in new technologies will improve the way you cooperate and the way you do business. And by the way, we are quite convinced that you are going to transform your business more rapidly. We run out a, a large and worldwide study, market study, at this uh, very beginning of year. And the fact is that ICT is absolutely underused within the uh, pharmaceutical ecosystem. By the way, right now, uh, using uh, new technologies, you will reduce your trial uh, time cycles. You will be able to fight against counterfeiting uh, um, problems. You will be able to improve your patient relationship management services. Two examples, two illustrations of that. The first one concerns a new services we have set up in Spain with Anofi called Diabetic. It's a new way of taking care of patients suffering from diabetes, combining different solutions uh, available on mobile phone, website, and there is here two uh, different categories of uh, benefits, some for the patients, of course, and some, of, some other uh, for the uh, health professionals. So this is really interesting because we have worked a lot around diabetes, we have lot around, a lot around the uh, kidney failure, for example, high blood pressure, for all these uh, chronic diseases today, we have a solution on stage uh, to improve the daily life of these patients. Another uh, illustration is um, an SMS authentication services to uh, fight against counterfeit.
the M30 services uh, provide us with an opportunity to serve our customers and they rely on us. When they get the medicine and the scratch and it's genuine, then they can come back again and again. It's good. I think it's very easy to use it uh, because all you have to do is just scratch off, send a text message and you get an instant response and also the text message is free of charge so that makes it very convenient. I feel very confident with the M10 degree service uh, especially because it's from Orange. Uh, I'm a subscriber of very many Orange products, uh, voice and internet so I'm very confident about it. So this will be my conclusion. So we are ready to support your business. So please, let's talk. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Denise. Uh, you heard that uh, our business and our world in healthcare is changing. Guess what is true? So also from an agency standpoint, we try new ways. We try to innovate. So today I'm talking about something that we incubated is a startup company called Vidium Health Incorporated. And, sorry. And it's about video. Uh, video is very big. Each two months, we get the entire broadcasting since the beginning of television new in terms of digital video. And even in terms of share of the online users, video is extremely big and expanding across smart TV, et cetera. Health videos are very big. One out of three people watching online video is about health. And that's more than food and celebrities, which is kind of amazing. Also, physicians are using videos for general purposes as well as for their uh, practice and education. However, while the consumption is global, it's also true that the assets are not. And this creates a unique opportunity because great videos are not always available in your language, the language you need to use in order to enjoy them. So we partnered with this startup company to create Vidium Health in Any Language. It's a video portal only for healthcare, which has the unique ability to globalize video assets through a proprietary subtitling technology, which is optimized for search engines. How it works. You upload a video, can be like YouTube, a user, can be a physician, and it's, and it's certified, can be a company, and the platform is able to subtitle and localize in multiple languages, either through crowdsourcing or through uh, professional translations. The result is automatically available across all platforms in a very, very simple way. It takes seconds. This is an example of what's happening. You know streaming well, just Francis in the room. This is one of the videos that he uploaded on Vidium, and guess what? You see on your right side, there's a physician from uh, Arabia that basically logged in, provided the translation, making the great video available to people in his own language. He's online since a few weeks in public beta, and it's basically under complete testing, but available for all of you to play with. And not to add too many words, Courses Mobile Enable It, I brought you a video to show you how it works in a kind of a funny way.
This is video healthy native language from publicist that was half advertising. Thank you very much and enjoy. <laughs>